Well, good morning, uh, friends, and Jasmine, thank you very much uh, for your words of introduction, and thank you uh, to you and your colleagues at TD for having us uh, here uh, this morning. I, um, Mitzi Hunter, uh, as she's wont to do, and quite properly so as the CEO, started encouraging me about 10 days ago to put my remarks together uh, for this morning. Uh, I started to do it at about uh, 9.30 last night. Um, and I mention that only because I then had one of those experiences where I had finished writing uh, a, a thousand words, which was about enough to fill the time that I had to uh, allocate it on the program. It's all very precisely <laughs> done. And I pressed save, and the whole thing disappeared. <laughs> So I did what most 58-year-old uh, men or women, I, well, I won't apply this to women, but certainly what most 58-year-old men would do, which is that I sort of struggled around trying to find where it was autosaved, because I knew somewhere it was, uh, utterly gave up on that. It is now literally quarter to 12, called my son, who lives nearby, uh, and <laughs> said, you've got to come over here, because I was really tired last night, and I said, I'm not writing this again. And he came over, and he worked for about a half an hour, and at like quarter past 12, he literally found about 750 words of the 1,000, thank God. <laughs> which had been auto-saved. I rewrote the last 250, and here we are. So <laughs> I um, thank God for my son. I've got to tell you, no matter what else he ever does, I mean, that's... Uh, so I do want to welcome you uh, to uh, the Civic Action 10th anniversary and, and, again, say thank you to TD Bank, which are such great supporters uh, of, uh, of Civic Action. You know, I had the privilege of attending at the birth of what was then known as the Toronto City Summit Alliance, uh, together with our late great friend David Pico, and I'm so delighted that Helen is here. I don't know where she's sitting. Oh, there she is right there. And uh, I, if you haven't read the book um, that Helen has written that sort of chronicles a lot of David's work, you should, because it is something that's a, it's about, about a great man, but it's also about a great story and a great city, and I think it's well worth uh, your reading. And, you know, I can tell you that back in those days, uh, when I went to see David just to be a speaker, and it just shows you I went to ask him to be a speaker at a city summit that we were pulling together, um, that out of that city summit and the alliance, it, it grew out of a, de a desire not to beef uh, or an ambition to upstage or to supplant any particular government or any particular politician, but rather out of a desire to see, just to see, that if we gathered together uh, people in various rooms from all walks of life, um, and from all points of view, and challenge them to address some of the big issues facing our city, if we did that, could we get more done together? And while the name has now changed uh, to civic action, and while the mandate has become regional, I think consistent with the reality of a lot of the issues that we're dealing with uh, in, in, uh, in, in an urban sense and an urban setting today, and while the roster of issues has changed uh, to some extent over those 10 years, that mandate to bring people together, uh, that mission to convene what I came to call the unusual suspects in rooms and around tables to build a stronger and fairer city, uh, continues to be at the heart of what we do. In some respects, I think it's easy to, to point when you're looking over 10 years to sort of what I'll call organizational accomplishments or policy changes uh, to illustrate what civic action has been all about uh, over the course of these 10 years. And so whether it's Luminato or the work that was done on MISWA, which changed this country's policies with respect to how, um, you know, families and so on were helped by government programs, or the Emerging Leaders Network, of which, which, of which Jasmine is one of many outstanding representatives that uh, could stand in front of you, um, and it's so well represented today, or the one that I'm proudest of, even though you're not supposed to have favorites, uh, the one that I'm proudest of in terms of the, the output of the work of the civic action is diversity. Uh, only because we have such a special challenge in this community in front of us and such a special opportunity uh, to do some things, and that is an area in which we have achieved tangible, measurable, important uh, results uh, that have uh, served an incredibly useful purpose in building that stronger and fairer and more prosperous and more inclusive uh, city region. So you can look at those kinds of things and say, well, those are all you know, measurable accomplishments with names and brochures and people and, and a, lot of, uh, a lot of good results, but in fact, it's really what lies behind those projects and those initiatives and those accomplishments. I think it would be a disservice to call it a process, because process is such a sort of a bland and boring kind of word. But what it is, in a way, I think, is a way of thinking, a way of working together, a recognition of shared opportunities and responsibilities which these things represent. And that, I think, has been the magic of civic action. And while I don't want to overstate this, and there's always been individual exceptions, of course, over time, I think it is fair to say that many an executive, in, you know, any place in business uh, in the GTA, 
would not really think of sitting down with a labor leader unless they had to, you know, because they were in a negotiation and they kind of had to sit there because that's what, you know, life told them they had to do. Or an anti-poverty activist, for that matter, the same thing. How many executives would think of sitting down, that's not my phone, by the way, um, <laughs> with, a, uh, with, a, uh, with an anti-poverty activist to discuss housing policy? And that's not because they don't like each other. It's not even because they would know in advance they would disagree, because often you find when you sit down and have these kinds of discussions, these different people with one another, that you agree. But I think it's because they, each one thinks the other wouldn't have any interest in their thoughts or their ideas. And I've learned from civic action, myself, and I think probably each and every one of you who have taken the trouble to be here this morning, and I thank you for that, that the very best way to tackle these issues is to do it together. That nobody has a monopoly on good ideas, and that in the end, we all want the same things for ourselves and for our children. I think if a lot of people in public life realize that, e even between and among all the parties, if you think about it for a minute, they're all at the legislature or in parliament for the same reason. They all got elected by somebody, and they're really all there to do the same thing. They come at it from different perspectives, but um, they're all there for the same reason. We all want a city region, and I use this expression all the time because I think it kind of sums up what we want. We want a city region that is strong and fair. We want a city region that looks well ahead and doesn't consume itself in the what I think is the often cynical short-term decision-making that has so eroded public confidence in a lot of our institutions. And we want to be proud of the communities in which we live. I think we want to be proud. You know, we have this set of Canadian values that I think we all mean to hold and to embrace and to grasp, but, but I think we want to make sure that we bring life to those and that we can be proud of the places we live. And that, of course, we know involves both wealth creation because it's fundamental uh, to making sure you have the money to pay for things, but also a commitment to social justice. And civic action has taught many of us, I think, I would say probably all of us in this room, that the best way to get to that stronger, fairer city is by working together. The banker learning from the anti-poverty activist and vice versa. The union leader learning from the executive and vice versa. Each taking the best of the ideas of the other and producing results out of collaboration. I have made friendships, and I bet you everybody in this room can say the same thing. I've made friendships arising out of civic action that I never would have made had I not uh, been lucky enough to become involved in this organization. I've learned things about our city region I never would have known if it wasn't for civic action. I was in this room the other night uh, speaking at a seminar on how to get single moms, how to help them get off social assistance. And people came up to me afterwards and said, how do you know about a lot of these things? And I said, well, because you get to know about the policies and the problems and the challenges and the idiosyncrasies of our laws. And the answer is because when you actually, through civic action and organizations like the United Way, get out and see those neighborhoods and talk to the people and listen to the people and sit with an anti-poverty activist and a banker and somebody from the United Way and so on, you learn. And, and when you learn, you can make a better contribution to these kinds of things. And, and so it's given me the opportunity, as I hope it has for each and every one of you, to work with people passionately committed to building that stronger, fairer city, knowing that we might not ever we might not ever, if you took a poll in this room right now, vote the same way. We might not socialize with each other. We might not work at the same workplaces or be devoted to doing the same things, but we all share a passion uh, for, our, for, for our broader community and for the people who call it home, every single one of them. So today, yes, I mean, 10th anniversaries are by definition, I guess, in some respects, a celebration of the past, and in particular, the outstanding achievements of civic action in developing a stronger and more inclusive leadership capacity. Because in the end, I think that's probably our number one assignment, is to develop a stronger and more inclusive leadership capacity, which in turn can then go out and engage and animate uh, people across the city. And so in this room today, uh, you know who you are, but you are some of our best friends, uh, people who are past board members and founding steering committee members, uh, I think close to a hundred uh, diversity fellows, uh, past uh, and present. Past members, of course, of our always devoted staff team, and they are a miracle in and of themselves because it's a tiny little group. I think it's, what is it these days? Is it 10 out of 11 women? It's, it's 12 with two men. 12 with two men allowed in on sufferance, but uh, having said <laughs> that. And I, that doesn't count me. I'm just a volunteer, and I wander in from time to time, and they sort of, you know, I, it's true to say you actually have to go through somebody else's office, like have to go through a rabbit warren to get to the men's washroom. I mean, they don't make it easy, but never mind. Um, but I want to just say to you who are our friends and our family um, that we thank each and every one of you for being here, but even more importantly uh, than being here today, thank you for what you've done over the years to allow us to be here today, all of us, and to celebrate a 10th anniversary. And it's not just a 10th, 10th anniversary, it's a 10th anniversary of accomplishment uh, and the ability to look forward. And I think when you look forward, you would say that the need for civic action today 
is greater than it has ever been. If it didn't exist and wasn't celebrating its 10th anniversary, somebody would be desperately scrambling to invent it. Uh, somebody with the ingenuity and the vision uh, of David Pico. But you know what? It does exist, thank goodness, and I think it's thriving. We've seen what we can do together. We've seen what people can do when they decide they're going to focus on what they have in common, when they focus on making a positive difference, when they focus on the public interest over politics, and when they focus on building that stronger, fairer city. I don't think there's a person in this room who would argue with the notion that it is the single best place in the world to live, the GTA. It is, by any objective measure. You don't have to be a booster, as we all are, by definition in some respects. Um, it's the best place to live and to work and to play and to raise a family and to grow old. But it's not going to stay that way simply because we wish it to be so. And I think that means that going forward, and that's really what we're going to devote some of our discussion to this morning, that we've got to summon the courage to make the decisions collectively that need to be made, whether they're about transit or about the way we deliver city services or about how you help those single moms to get off social assistance. I think we have to stop averting our eyes to the reality of two solitudes developing within our region. It's been something that I did come to see during my time that I was in public life and even in my activities with civic action and charitable organizations, there are developing and in fact you might argue there has have developed within our region two solitudes, uh, those who are comfortable and those who are isolated. And many of the latter group, if we're being candid about this, are newer Canadians who we invited to come uh, to this country. And collectively, we've got to simply decide that that's not acceptable to us, it's not consistent with Canadian values, and that we are going to build that stronger, fairer city region, and we're going to do it in a way that honours the values that we associate so proudly with Canadian citizenship. You know, civic action isn't perfect. It is not uh, an organization that has found solutions to every problem or will uh, going forward. But we're sure going to try. And we're going to do that as we've done, I think, over the 10 years. And nothing stays the same, but you keep changing uh, as you have to do. But we're going to do it by developing stronger, more inclusive leadership. And we're going to get those leaders from every single corner of the community, every walk of life, every political perspective, every issue, around table after table, day after day, uh, to work at finding solutions and achieving results, which is what we've been all about. So we're here today to kick off the next 10 years, I think, really, and to update and to evolve our thinking about the collaboration that we've always believed, going back to the early days of the First City Summit, uh, is essential to getting things done for people. We don't know exactly what that entails. And if we had that answer, I guess I would have been up here with Mitzi and we'd have been presenting it to you. But of course, that's not the way we do things. Uh, so what we are going to do today is have a discussion that's going to be uh, put some people in front of you to hopefully uh, put forward some provocative ideas and to encourage uh, your response. And we um, have asked somebody to moderate that discussion who is, as they say, and, and one thing I didn't say just before I finish and introduce Dwight is to say um, we've been blessed. Uh, with strong leadership in the organization. I've had the privilege, even in my short time as the chair, but going all the way back to the beginning, uh, to work both with Julia Deans, who's here this morning, uh, and with now with Mitzi Hunter. And they are two dynamic, dedicated um, leaders who, uh, they put their full time into this, and more than full time. It's unbelievable how hard they work, and I just want to acknowledge that. Uh, and uh, you'll hear from Mitzi a little later on, and Julia, I'm very pleased, is here this morning.